multi-user video chat group. So uh, this is our presentation. So we next. Uh, so basically, after our last stage, when we last talked to you, there was a few things that we found after our evaluation with the Talkbox uh, video chat application. There were problems with uh, document coll collaboration, visibility of windows, um, and coordination of people speaking, people talking over each other, uh, people not sure who was paying attention to them at the time. But what we decided was the biggest problem was really this coordination of speaking, people knowing whether or not you were talking to them, Stuff like that. So that's the main value of our project. So for our first uh, two, for a prototype, our initial prototype, we did a paper prototype, and this took a lot more kind of activity on the team members' part to play the position of the person talking to them, and a lot of creativity on the user's part to pretend that they were talking to somebody in the imaginary chat window. But it did allow us to uh, kind of kind of formalize the type of lists that we were going to use to coordinate speakers, like our speaker list and stuff like that. So the next. So for the cognitive walkthrough, what we did find after using a tech savvy user and a less experience uh, less tech savvy older user, which we did use because we figured they'd be more sensitive to really complicated designs, was that we found that they didn't really understand the coordination of how to start a chat, so we only used invite buttons on the contact list. So we had one less button to invite people into the chat. Um, for coordination of speaker order, they clicked on the windows of people who are currently in the chat to decide who would speak next. They had a little bit of difficulty with our window layout buttons, which uh, window layout was an important issue with people because you wanted to be able to see everybody quite clearly. And they also had difficulty kind of setting a time for each speaker because we wanted to have a coordinated conversation where each person had an amount of time to speak so that no one was stepping on each other's toes. So for a mean fidelity prototype, we chose Adobe Flash because it had an easy integration of video, um, manipulation of window, and windows, and we decided to support, to support the coordination of speakers, and that was our main draft. So Michelle will go on the demo and show you what we've done. So far, then, all that um, Joel said, get a flash. Um, so we have a screen, we log in. And immediately, I'll take you to a page where it shows your webcam. And it has buttons on the top corner. There's a contacts button, a speaker button, which is grayed out initially. And it's the messaging button and a layout button. And these two buttons are grayed out until you invite someone into the conversation. So what I'm going to do is invite someone in. And the way we use to simulate this is to have another webcam hooked up. So it's um, sort of like they pretend we're talking to someone else. Um, as you can see, there's someone else on the screen. Their screen is kind of glowing blue because of uh, this, sorry, the speakers list. What happens is we have a speakers list. It maintains the order of which people talk. And to simulate other users, we set up timers so that every so often someone will add themselves onto the speakers list. And when they're on the speakers list, a timer starts on their window, and they'll start talking, and the screen goes blue to indicate that they're the current speaker. Um, to add yourself on, you click Add Now, and you see that on the screen there's also an indication of who is supposed to speak next. Then it switches over to the next speaker, and the timer will restart. Um, our idea was to have a customizable time so that, depending on who was the moderator, they can set how long each speaker can speak for. Um, we didn't implement this because it's was more of a horizontal prototype. We also have a layout button to tackle the problem that Joel mentioned earlier about being able to view users effectively. So we have four preset layouts. Um, you click on the button there and it'll rearrange the windows so that you can view the users however you like. Um, if you add more users in, um, more video feeds, the other person will also add stuff on the speakers list in a similar manner. And when there are three people on the speakers list, it shows the timer on this person currently speaking. The, yeah, the people who aren't speaking have this. So I'll turn this back over to Shanyel to talk about our evaluation. Okay, so in terms of our stage four evaluations, um, so we plan to use another observation, uh, very similar to the one that we used for our initial talk about evaluation, we found that it uh, gave us really rich results. Um, so in specific, our goal is to test the speaker's order list that we've added and all the new features. 
so the layout and um, hopefully it. Sorry, is that? Yeah, yeah, just finish, finish. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully, we wanted to see if it it is an improvement and if users like the new features that we've added. Um, so again, we chose observation because we can actually see what they're doing, and according to our setup, which we're gonna. Um, attach multiple webcams and simulate a, a video conference, um, we can actually see what they're doing, whether they're getting frustrated and things like that. Um, so, I'm just going to next slide. Yeah, so again, we're going to use four UBC CS students, and this time we're adding two um, older tech, non technical savvy users um, who may be more sensitive to your features and different types of technology. Um, this is the obvious protocol this we Yeah. So we're going to have a laptop set up just like Michelle showed you over there. We may have more webcams and we're going to attach remote desktop so we can actually see what the user on the laptop is doing at the time. Okay, thank, thank you. you.